I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. 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 Come unto me, all ye who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, verse 29, upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Why? Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Amen. I'm going to make a small expository sermon out of this. Last time I told you there are many types of sermons, right? You have expository, meaning you have to expose the story. Good. Yeah. We have time. Yes. Now, yes. 30 minutes is not enough. So, but anyway. He said, Come unto me. Who is he calling? Us. 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 Say, Me. 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 <laughs> Who is he calling? Me. 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 Say, Come unto me. Why should I come unto you? Ask yourself the question. Not everybody who he says, Come unto me, should come. He singled out and said, all those who are heavily laden. We could be many there. He said, he said, come unto me. All those who are carrying bags. If I'm not carrying bags, can I come to him? No. Uh -huh. Come unto me. All those who are heavily laden. All those who have a burden. Who are carrying those at their back. That they cannot come to me. Who is one of those? Right. So it's like only three, yeah? Oh, right. four. Right. Okay. Right. So, oh, eh? All How many? Right. All of us. Right. The question is, what kind of laboring, what kind of burden, what kind of thing are you carrying that you need a helper? Hmm? What is it? What kind of load is it? You need to understand it. I'm just preparing your mind for the convention. He said, come unto me. Who is catching your people? All those who are heavily needed. You guys come. And ask yourself, what kind of, what kind of burden am I carrying? That Jesus Christ could be my solution. Could be my answer. What is it? Maybe it's maybe, um, sickness. Maybe it's sicknesses. The sickness are taking toll on you that you have spent all the time you have and you are not getting healed. He said, come unto me. What is your lady? What is your burden? Unforgiveness, you can't even forgive. The, the moment you see those people that have wronged you, that it pinch you, you can't even sleep. Ah, this girl has wronged me so much. If I see her, I feel like I tear her into pieces. You can't forgive. While the girl is sleeping and snoring, you are now having sleepless night. Who is a fool here? You. you. Unforgiveness has become a burden. What's your burden? Broken heart. Broken heart. Oh. <laughs> so, for me, I taught. <laughs> Broken heart was, 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 was easy until I passed through one. But through that, I learned that it's better to have a broken heart than a broken brain. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have broken brain, you can't think straight. You begin to fool around. Uh -huh. He said, if you are heavily laden, come. This is a metaphor that he says used in speaking those days. Because those days, there were no cars and trains and trams like we have. So when the farmers go to farm, they will put everything on the uh, donkey. See, there's a little donkey be carrying load, heavy. Come and the farmer may be camels too. The farmer will also carry his own. He just said, come. But last night, I was studying this, and God said, read, read again. Like I was teaching you this morning. I read through the whole scripture and say, I said, wow. But something strike me. Go down. He said, verse 29 said, <laughs> After you have come with your burden, let me use this Bible as an illustration. He said it's coming, he said, somebody please come. Say yoke. 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 Please hold this one. You know what is yoke? Yes, what is yoke? <laughs> no, not the egg yoke. <laughs> oh. No. Okay. Those days when they were plying the ground, eh? They were plowing the ground. They put a very heavy uh, object at the back of the pool. 
and they attach all the machineries at the back. So when the bull is moving forward, yeah. he's pulling the yoke forward and he's carrying the ground. It's a heavy metal. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are wooden. It's very heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brahim, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Please come. Take a Bible and come. You are you have your problem. You are coming to me. Come. As you give him your Bible. <laughs> Stand there. I am Jesus calling. No. She is Jesus calling. Come unto me, all those who are heavily laden. So put your Bible on your head. He is now heavily laden with his burden. Unforgiveness, drunkenness, whatever you can take about sicknesses. He has it on him. Please come to Jesus. Come. He is coming to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Hold on. Huh? Jesus, hold on. Hold on. Verse 29. Jesus said, Take my yoke. Jesus is having his own yoke. He said, take my yoke upon yourself. <laughs> what is happening here? Is, it a, is, a, is his burden getting lighter? No. He says, he's putting another yoke on his yoke. Hey. Thank you. Over yes, yoke. Please, thank you. You see now, have you seen that picture? Does it make sense? I'm having my labor. He says, you said I should take your yoke also upon myself. Take a minute to think about this. In human mind, does it make sense, right? No. I thank God that whenever he, the Bible is written, they always place commas there. Yes. Last time I taught you that when it's a semicolon, it means pause. Relax. If you like, go and drink water. Come and continue. If it's a comma, take it easy. Now, Jesus has given you his yoke. There's a comma there. I'm reading from verse 29. <laughs> 29 says, Take my yoke upon you. Having done that, learn from me. You came with your burden. You took my yoke upon yourself. Don't stand there. Learn from me. It's by learning from him, that's where the answer comes. By learning from him, that's where the solution comes. By learning from him, that's where your burden and the yoke becomes lighter. But nowadays, we don't want to learn from him. The Bible says, Jesus saw the joy that was before him, so he endured it to the cross. Amen. Amen. If you are learning from Jesus, you must have a vision. Something must be set in front of you so that you will try your best to achieve it. You might think it's diploma, that's more. You can think it's job opportunity, fine. You might think it's marriage, proficiat. But all those things, we leave them here. Cry, when Satan was uh, tempted, he said, he said Everything in this world has been given to me. You just bow down and worship and I'll give it to you. He says, my friend, flick it up. <laughs> the Bible says, I should worship God alone. Jesus did not set his eye only on the things of this earth, but what things above. So, if you want to set a goal in front of you, set a heavenly goal. By so doing, you can learn as Christ did it. But when you come to us, nay, show is, health to a, relaxing number three, who a cannot seat number four, God can be the last. He's omnipotent. He knows all things now. No, that's a terrible mistake. Put God first and learn from Him. Early in the morning, Christ will wake up and go to a solitary place and He prays. He prays through the whole night. The question is, are you learning from him? Do you pray? Do you even have a quiet time on your own? I remember once upon a time in Matthew chapter 4, when the Satan came to tempt him, he said, It is written. He came for the second time there, my friend. It is written. He came the third time and said, It is written. He didn't say, It's on my phone. Let me check. Satan. 
it has been programmed here in uh, can you select that no it is written how many times a week i would say a week do you open your bibles christ knew god's word he said after you have come with your burden he's not he didn't say come and i will lift up your burden he didn't say that most christians come to church with the notion that i'm going to church so that christ will lift up no did he write that one there? He said, even when you are come, take my yoke upon yourself. Have you taken it? Pause. <coughs> Learn from me. See how I take my step. One, two, three. Ah, I thought maybe when you are with your, with your burden, you are climbing hills. When you are climbing a hill, it's difficult, right? But when you are descending, it's not difficult, right? When you are, you are, you are, you are walking a plane, it's not difficult. Christ will put a floor in front of you that you don't even feel it. When Poseidon was leading, he said, Jacob dwelt for Rachel seven years, like a day, is gone. He was tricked. Another seven years, 14 years. And he was, you see, it goes easy. Imagine the same when you come to Christ. Don't expect him to do magic for you. Learn from him learn from him. Everybody is going to answer this question. What have we learned from Christ ever since you came to him? Eric. Enoch, I'm coming to you at the next. I'm you number three. James, number four. I'm honest. I have not come to you yet. <laughs> Eric, what have you learned from Christ ever since you came to him? Quick, quick, quick. One word, one word. I so. Uh-huh. One word. Give it to me. You? Respect. respect, thank you. You have learned respect. Ama, forgiveness. forgiveness. God bless you. But I know. Love. Love. Oh, God bless you. Eric. Humble, humility. Thank you. MC of the day. Give it to me. Uh, gentleman. Gentleness. Imano. Which one? <laughs> My son, Imano. Uh -huh. Three. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, three, you must. Uh -huh. Faith. Faith. Mm -hmm. He had faith in God. His father did never disappoint him. He means the point of death. Faith. Robert. No, you are not Robert. You are David. 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 Give me one. Peace. peace. You can create peace. You like that? You pull on your head like that? You can create peace? No problem. Chucky, my old man. Give it to me. Somebody said it. I'm coming to you. Man, I'll take off your answer. What have you learned from Christ when you came to him? Christ was somebody who respected time. Somebody said respect. respect. When he had appointment with the disciples, he never failed them. He said, go and cast out demons. He backed them up with his power. He never disappointed them. You have appointment with Christ, 9 o'clock, he'll be here 10 o'clock. Is that respect? Have you learned from him? No. He said, I will not go there. Let me, let me come back to you. Comfort, give me one. Okay. Somebody said yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh -huh, no, give me another one. <laughs> I see one. Mm -hmm. Give me one. Endurance. Endurance. Uh, he endured it to the cross. It was difficult, but Christ endured it. It's cold, but you need to get out from there. Sleep in this lecture, but nah, let me wake up and go to church. Sleep, get away from Let me endure you because Christ endured it to the cross. Amen. If you have endured and learned how to endure, mm. sleeping will not be your master. Sleeping is for lazy people. You go to bed 12 o'clock in the night, you come back up at 7? Seven? 7 hours by you, baby? Come on, man. What have you learned from Christ? Amid Rehim? Yima? Shaki? Give me one. Patience. Are you Shaki? Patience is a girl's name. <laughs> Remember, not everybody did Christ invite to come to him. He said, Come, those who are heavy laden, come. He specified it. Not everybody was invited. We are all many here, 20 of us, or maybe more, but not everybody is invited by Christ. I mean, I know I have my bread in Christ, I am here. Give me your yoke, I will carry it too. Now, I want to learn from you. How should I take my steps? Gently, one by one, with humility and respect. 
I don't know, maybe you don't have any burden. Maybe you don't have any loads on your head. But if you have one, Christ is the answer. Amen. He's here waiting for you to come. Bring yours. Amen. Amen. Verse 20, he said, Take my yoke upon you as I've just explained. So when you come to Christ, it's not coming and leaving. No. You're going to take his yoke upon yourself. And that is number one. Come to church on that is Christ's yoke. Learning the scriptures, learning how to preach and pray is his yoke. Yes. Teaching others is his yoke. Obedience. Witness, yeah, it is. What again, Ima? Obedience. Obedience is one. Again. Jesus was so much committed to God's work that human authorities could not stand him. They said, we are going to stone you. He passed through the people. Whilst they were beating him, blood is whistling everywhere. He never said a word. He was committed to saving me and you. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that by his stripes, we were he passed and we were healed. He was committed. They were beating him. If it's with you, they take anyone. I want this funny Ghana Jesus version. Yeah. This guy, please don't do that. It's funny. He did it without any reservation for me and you. Because he wanted to provide answers to your question. So if you say Christ is the answer, he was committed to giving you his answers. He laid aside all his. Uh, heavenly glory and honor and splendor. He let everything aside. And when he came, he didn't even take a position of an elder in a church. <laughs> or a pastor, no. But a clerical, no. The Bible says he took a position of a servant. Aqua. He was committed to it. For who? For you. But what is your committed commitment from your side to his work? When you take our offering papers, coins throughout. Coins. 50 cents, 20 cents. But you have the audacity to go to a place like Zara, high in MCNR, you take one, you pay 25, and it doesn't even be worth it. Then you wear it, you feel good. Today, Yima will say, I look nice. Of course, Yima will say it. But will God say it? Then the coins, that is the change, the result that you get from the casa, can you put it in? See, you are creating the burden. But when you come to him, he will give you a yoke. And then you begin to learn. You start removing those things from you when you start learning from Christ. He was committed and dedicated to the, his work. You want to finish it so that you and I could be freed. Brothers and sisters, we have to be serious about God's work. It's not how shine we look on the outside that counts. But how we do his work, if that counts. You might always put your exams. I asked somebody to do the opening prayer this morning. He said, he didn't even answer me on Thursday. Friday, I put a question mark. I sent. Saturday, I called. No answer. Saturday evening. I uh, that place. I'm doing exams, so I cannot even come. <laughs> For opening prayer. <laughs> exams. No problem. But I know people eh, who have their master's degrees. I teach, me myself, I've never been to university before, but I still teach those who are doing their masters. I teach them, how can you imagine that? And when they pass, you say, wow, how could you do that? I say, God is my answer. And after graduating, you still come to get a job to do. Yes. But you are now fighting for a diploma. What guarantee do you have that you will even pass the exams? No guarantee. That two hours you spend in here can never make you pass. Let me tell you. The two hours you spend here in the church, you just say hour, two hours to sit behind your book. If God says, I'll let you forget, you make you forget. Is he? Is he the answer? Yeah. Is Christ the answer? Yes. Your book is not the answer. No. So sometimes give us a break. Why? Yes, you have a crack. A crack. Friday, if you never come and meet any PRWC member in Friday service, no, no, except Eric and sometimes Arnold. Nobody. Do you go to school on Saturdays? Answer me. Do you go to school on Saturdays? No. I work on Saturdays. I still go to all night. When I come three hours late, I go. Friday evening, 
Hey, then come. Weekend, let's booze. Sunday, let the police and come. Otherwise, they will say I'm not come. It's all good. <coughs> but if Christ is the answer, then ask your question very well. If Christ is the solution, then prepare a better problem. Mm, you hear me? What did I say? Thank you. He didn't end there. He said again, verse 29, I am gentle and lowly at heart. Other translation says, I am meek and lowly at heart. Now, meekness and weakness are not the same. Meekness and weakness, they are not the same. Weakness is when you lack force. You lack strength. When you have no day, you have lack no ability. You are unable to sustain a great weight of pressure or strain. That's why when they go to small steps, hey, their hair color even change. <laughs> <laughs> they have decided not to go with that guy anymore. They have decided not to go with that girl anymore. The girl will text him, text her, text him, text her, what's up? They have no strength. That is weakness. Again, if you are unable to stand, withstand temptation, you are weak. You see the girl dressed nice, shapes, Coca Cola. Until you fall into the gutter, you can't stand temptation. He said, I'm going to think about your proposal. One day, no call. Second day, no call. Third day, your heart, your blood pressure is boom, 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 boom. What's he going to say? Oh, I bet you ask one thing. Eh? You can't start temptation, you are weak. Jesus said, I am weak. He didn't say, I am weak. So the weak ones among us, let us learn from Christ and be meek, not weak. You can't be here maximum 10 minutes after 9, you are weak. Sleeping is even stronger than you. Sleeping. <laughs> It's stronger than you. <laughs> Temperature now 14 degrees around December. When we came in the 90s, you can't go out there with this. Very cold. Now you can't even walk, walk like this outside. No cold. No snow. It's cold. You are weak. No. Christ, in spite of the weather condition, he was hanging on the cross. Very hot sun. He endured it. He was not weak. He was meek. What is meekness? Meekness have people who have self-control, they can control themselves. That is meekness. Again, people who are humble and teachable. I like this guy, Eric. Why do we always single him out? I asked him, Eric, can you preach on Sunday? No answer the first day. <laughs> Second day, Eric, I asked a question. He said, hmm, Eric, I'm thinking about it too. Okay. I said, Eric, don't worry. But if you say, I'm taking a match, I'll give you a credit. And I talk to him, I say, don't worry. If you know you want to do it, <coughs> just say, Edda, I can do it, but please, can you help me? Yes. And this morning, I taught you small, small things. Abby, you are already, always ready to learn. You humble yourself. Me too, I learn. I learn from other great men of God and, 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 and uh, this things. I go to seminary and stuff. I learn. People who are me, they are bold. Say, Elder, let me tell you, this preaching thing, you know, I can do it. I don't care how my, my, my knees are going to shake, but it's boldness. That is meek. Again, people who are meek, they, they are ready to say, I am sorry. Now, so yeah, now it's me, you will be there. Yeah, God, the best, you do me, I do you. No, that is weakness. If you are meek, you are always willing to apologize when things go wrong. That's meekness. Meekness doesn't say mean you are full of. No. Oh, yeah, baby, amen. Amen. It's better than anything. You do me, I do you. No, you are weak. That's why you are retaliating. If you are meek, give it to God and leave it. What kind of happen there? If Christ is your answer, you give it to him to answer for you. Pierre WC. Make people save others. I wanted to come and explain Christmas question that you've been asking me. Yes, and when I was reading the Bible, I saw but I just really say, Ada, it's okay, that one will be okay, but let's go to the convention and hit it first. Oh, okay. So I had to drop everything down, start all over again. 
from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, now I'm standing here. I'm serving you. That's weakness. I wouldn't let sleep be my master. Otherwise, I am weak. Jesus said, learn from me. What I'm learning from Christ is his meekness, his gentility at heart. Are you here? Yes. It's like you are sleeping. No. Because there's no PowerPoint presentation. Next time. Christ is meek. Let's learn to be meek. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Who is speaking here? Who is speaking? In your Bible, it's written with red letters, right? Check it out. Who is speaking? Jesus. What, 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 what kind of Bible do you have there? Yes. How many years old is that? <laughs> Where is your Bible? It's the same. It's the same. Okay. It's okay. Not all the Bible texts are with red when Jesus speaks, but most of them they have red text. Jesus said, My burden is light. Hey, he said, You have a burden. He has a burden. He had a yoke and a burden. But he said, You have a burden. You come to me. You think, Oh, by the way, you have to have Take his own upon you. His own is serving God. Christ saved God. How are you serving God? Anyhow, jump with me to Mark, uh, no, John chapter 8, verse 26. John 8, 26. You're about to close. John 8, 26. John 8, 26. Yes, please. Are you there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Then they said to him, mm -hmm. Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you. No, John 8, 26. John 8, 26. I'm reading from the King James Version. Yes, please. Thank you, James. I have many I have, things yes. to say and to judge of you. I have many things to say and to judge of you. Please sit down. The chief version says, I have many things to say and to judge of you. Do you think when you appear before God, he will judge you about your sin? You, you think God is only that? No, 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 no. You stole somebody's pepper, go to hellfire. Uh, you insulted your mother, uh, go to hellfire. You think that's why God is going to play with you? No. He just said it. I have so many things to say and judge of them. He has not even come to your sin side. Things like your commitment to his work, your dedication to his ministry, your loyalty to him, your ability to keep your promises. You promise him you stay whole until you marry. If you are promised to a human being, you are fulfilling it. How much more to Christ, your answer you can't. Lord, I will worship you with all my heart. I will love you with all my heart. But when it's cold, spare me this one. <laughs> you are my everything, everything, everything. To... But when it comes to small problem, oh God, you know I am weak, you strengthen me. No, you are not weak, I strengthen you. You can do it. Then you sing the song, He can do it. To make it better for you. More than a, uh, uh, uh. Hey. Uh -huh. Then when the problem comes, he is the Lord in hey, then you forget the right of the lyrics. They begin to run around. You forget that he is your answer. You know the reason why when you have you can't come to God? After when oh God, yeah, now you are coming. Because when he told you to come to church on Friday, he said, Well, you know go up. Come to church on Sunday, nine o'clock. Let's begin. Bible said he said, Ah, let me sleep small. He said, I have many things to judge you with. After that, then you come to the sins you did. And you see, you did this, bam. Now let me put that one aside. If Christ is your answer, what question do you have? If Christ is your solution, what problem do you have? If Christ is our answer, what is our problem? The church is suffering from a our church is sick. That is our problem. Amen. He said we should bring it to him. Having come, we should learn from him. Jesus was a prayerful man. He pray. We don't pray. He, he, he has everything of the Bible in his head. So he said, it is written. It is written. I never knew those things he was saying was written in Deuteronomy. I never thought about that. 
The way you don't know it. That time Moses was around. Jesus was not nowhere to be seen that time. Yes, yes, later Jesus came. But he had already left everything. Isaiah 61, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has announced that scripture in Isaiah. But when he came, he quoted, he said, Today the scripture has been fulfilled. Why? He knew the word. We should be students of God's word. We even feel shy to carry the Bible in our hands to walk on the street. We feel shy. We have a mobile phone. That one is enough. Oh, all the versions are in. All the versions are in. Fine. God bless you. If Christ is your answer, what is your problem? There's two last questions I want to raise before I close. Who is a believer here? Please stand up. If you are a believer, stand up. I want to make as accounting believers. Everybody is a believer here. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, are we are we all believers. God bless. Say God bless us. God bless us. Okay, sit down. Oh, they are busy. Who is a Christian here? Please stand up. I want only the Christian to stand up. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. If you are sure, please stand up. So all of us are Christians. Oh, please let's sit down. God bless us. How many of us are followers of Christ here? Please stand up. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. There are five followers of Christ here. Okay, all right. Please, you can sit down. God bless you. How many of us are church goers here? Please stand up. <laughs> Nobody is a church goer. <laughs> church goer. Oh, you don't understand the word church goer. Somebody who goes to church. Church goer. We agree to you. We also go to church. Oh, they just church goer. Please sit down. Amen. Christ is the answer. That's our thing. There are difference in the words I use them. A believer and a Christian are not the same. We say you are all believers. What do you believe in? You believe in who? Who is Christ? Who is Christ? And who is the Son of God? Christ. What do you believe about him? Solution. That's what you believe in him. Yeah, He's an answer to your solution. He's your health automat when you need health. Oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he, he's, he's just the man who. Just? No, no, not That's what he believes. No, no, no. It's not just but you know, I believe he's a son of God who came to die for me. I'm a okay. You're a believer. So are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. What makes you a Christian? That I believe in. Uh, That's your belief. That's make you a believer. I believe uh, I am a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Christian? Yes. What makes you a Christian? Let's listen here. What makes you a Christian? The way I walk. The way you walk. Hey. <laughs> how do you walk? Come, come and show us how you walk. Brother, are you a Christian? I'm a Christian. What makes you a Christian? The way you do your church. The way you do your things, like for example, the way you do your things, when you come to church and when you come to church alone, so when you're outside, it's not outside. When you put your chairs outside, your character is. We are learning, eh? When you do your things outside, maybe you walk with friends, we always come to church, and nobody is supposed to do what is right, but God is supposed to do what is right. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Not a nosy. How are you? Are you a believer? Yeah, I'm a believer. Are you, are you a Christian? Yeah, are you a follower of Christ? Yes. Uh, are you a church member? Yeah, church Or a church goer? Uh, yes. Church goers are those they will come. We count the numbers, they are part of them. Those, those who come. But they don't care whether the church grow or the church doesn't grow. They don't give a damn. He come because the friend is here. If I don't go and I will call me, and I will always send you WhatsApp. You, I, I, let me go. I don't want to this man. Why do you want? Just want to be among the members. 
you're wasting time. Increase. If you are a Christian, the word Christian means you are Christ like. You are like Christ. In case I'm walking by and then I stumble over your leg. Hey, <laughs> the question you ask yourself is what will Christ do? <laughs> if Christ is your answer, then you must have a question. I always come back to that point. If what you want to from somebody are talking about you, Christ the answer. What will Christ do if I were him? You go and confront because he said in Matthew, if you, your brother offends you, go to him. Confrontation, sister. I've heard last time that you said my coat is too black. <laughs> but it's better than the moment I see you. What kind of bounce my car come in there? No. Will Christ do that? No. So if you are a Christ like, then you are a Christian. The way you dress, you dress nicely. You don't go putting your jeans here with your belt here. And then, what is that? <laughs> Will Christ dress like that? No. But you can be a believer. Yes. You believe Christ is the Son of God. Yes. He came on this earth once, once upon a time, 2,000 years ago. Yes. He died for your sins. Yes. You are a believer. You believe in him. Fine. No problem. Are you walking like that on the street with your, with your trousers hanging here? Every guy you see wants to be here. Will Christ do that? So your believer making doesn't make you completely a Christian. Are we here? So if Jesus said, learn from me, become like me, he was moved to the ground. He was humble. He respected himself. He always dressed nicely. You dress with your boxer shorts. People now, do you think that they, they like the boxer shorts? What is the character? We bought it from Mabra. Go, 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 go there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a Christian, you behave like Christ. <laughs> when Christ got the authenticity to come to this earth, he said, I am going with all splendor and man. He came as a man, he did his things well. It's a high time we as believers and Christians and churchgoers and whoever we are, we should come to one theme that Christ is our answer. Amen. If he is the answer, then we have to bring the solution, the, 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 I mean, the, the problem for him to answer. We should rather create extra. No. Amen. 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 Are you angry with me? No. no. So, from to next, next week, we want to see a new transformation. Pray in your closet. Come to church on time. It's not respect for us to open the door, 8.30, Eric will be here, Pesadio will come, and then 9.10, then we begin to come. No, if you are going to school, would you go late? But you are starting to get good diplomas, right? When that bank manager employs you, and then you come one, two, three, four, five times late. They will sack you, right? It's not the same diploma that you are getting that will cause them to sack you. Yes. The same diploma. If I were you, I put those things behind me. Paul said, I put all these things behind me and I strap towards the goal for a crown. Diploma is papier. It can burn up, it can get lost. Water, water can wet it, kapot. But a crown still remains. So children of God, I urge you, let and Christ remain your answers. You have the problem, push it aside, because I'm coming to you. Here is a spiritual place. Before you realize, things will pass on to the better side that will show you. I'm ending here. I'm not teaching today, so no questions. Next week we continue. Amen. We thank God for His word. Amen. 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 Amen.